Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. As promised, this is the full project video for the Walnut Sofa Table. This video is designed to be a comprehensive woodworking lesson that will answer any question that may come up during the build. If you're going to build this project, you can find the professional step-by-step -step plans at the link in the description below. Let's get started. I'm using Baltic Birch plywood for this project because it's very heavy, dense, and does a great job holding screws. I'll get started by cutting the parts to size a little heavy. Once the parts are smaller, lighter, and easier to handle on the table saw, I'll cut them to their final width and length. I'll rip the parts to their final width on the saw stop, and then set up a crosscut sled on the Powermatic and crosscut the parts to length. I'll be able to use the offcuts for the drawer dividers and to beef up the insides of the table. I'll cross cut these parts to size back at the saw stop. Now I've got the top, the two sides and a few of the other parts cut to size. The next step is to attach the sides to the top with screws. So now I need to pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws. To pre-drill and countersink holes for the screws, I'll measure in 3 eighths of an inch and draw a line. And then measuring over from the front and back, I'll make a mark at an inch and a quarter and six inches. When I attach the sides, I'm using Type Bond 2 wood glue. I've clamped the parts in place, making sure that they're flush at the front and the sides. And then I'll use an inch and a quarter nail on the nail gun just to tack them in position. This isn't structural, this is just to keep the parts from moving around until I get a chance to screw the parts together to have a stronger joint. To avoid splitting the plywood or breaking the screw, I'll drill a 3 30 seconds pilot hole into the plywood side. And then use a number eight by inch and three quarter cabinet screw to screw the parts together. I want the sides of the table and the top of the table to be a little bit heavier than three quarters just so the table looks a little bit more substantial. And I'll do that by patting out the sides and the bottom of the top with 3 8 plywood. After pre-drilling and countersinking holes for the screws, I evenly spread wood glue to the surface of the plywood. I'll tack the plywood in place with 3 quarter inch nails to keep the plywood from moving around and then use 3 quarter inch screws. The next step is to cut the 3 8 plywood to beef up the top of the table. I did take a measurement for these parts, but I found it best to cut them a little heavy and then trim them to size for the perfect fit. If you're going to build this project, click on the link in the description for my professional step-by-step -step plans. These easy-to-follow plans, along with Materialist, will help you build a project that will last a lifetime. Now I've got the 3 8 plywood cut to size, I've countersunk the holes, and I'm ready to start putting things together. This is the kind of thing that you want to really take your time and make sure everything fits first, so I've already done that. If we take the cabinet dividers or drawer dividers and put them in position, I'll be able to drop this piece in the center, and that's a nice fit. So, the way I'm going to put this together is I'm taking these parts out. Let's see how that works. There we go. And 
going to attach the 3 8 plywood to the sides first and then the drawer dividers and then last this center piece of 3 8 Again, I'll evenly spread wood glue on one side of the plywood and then tack the parts in place with a nail gun before using 3 quarter inch screws for the stronger joint. Now that I have the two end pieces in, I'll use a piece of the scrap 3 8 plywood, hold it up tight against each side, and trace a line. Then I'll measure and mark at 2, in the center at 8, and again at 2. And I'll do that on both sides. Next I'll pre-drill holes for screws so I can attach the dividers from the top. Now I'll flip the table onto its face and countersink the holes that I just drilled from the top. Now I'll attach the dividers with wood glue and I'll tack them in place just like I did with the sides, making sure that I'm flush. And then use inch and three quarter construction screws. Here you might notice that I forgot to drill the pilot holes for the screws. This turned out to not be a big problem, however it did bulge the plywood a little, and when I attached the piece in the center, it needed a little convincing with the wooden mallet. Now that I have the 3 8 plywood attached to the bottom of the top and the drawer dividers in position, I'm just about ready to attach the bottom of the table. But before I do that, I'm going to attach drawer stops to the bottom of the top. And this is a little bit different. I haven't done this before, but I think it's going to work. The idea here is the stops will not only prevent the drawer from being pushed all the way into the table, but also prevent the drawers from being pulled all the way out of the table and accidentally dropping the drawer on the floor. So I'll go ahead and get started by cutting the stops to length. I've set up a stop block and I'm cross cutting the stops at 12 inches. To make the stops look a bit nicer, I've readjusted the stop block, set the saw at a 45 degree angle, and I'll cut a small chamfer at each end. Next I'll use the drill press to pre-drill and countersink holes in the drawer stops. I use a half inch piece of scrap wood to make sure that I'm setting the drawer stops back an exact half of an inch. I'll clamp the stops in place and attach them with one inch screws. 
I wanted to interrupt real quick to let you know that I needed to make a small screwdriver to attach the drawer stops. That's after the drawer is in place. I wasn't able to find one, but these are very easy to make. I used a piece of sapili, just shaped it on the sander and the table saw, and then I used a star driver simply because it's less likely to strip a screw as opposed to a Phillips or a flathead. I've cut the bottom of the table to size, and now I'll mark it to pre-drill and countersink holes, and then attach the bottom by screwing through the sides of the table and through the bottom into the drawer dividers. I use a framing square to mark lines at the bottom of the table at the center of the drawer dividers. Pulling from each end, I'll make a mark at two, in the center at eight, and again, pulling from the other side at two. On the sides of the table, I'll use a straight edge. Before attaching the bottom of the table, I'll remove and label the drawer stops. Here's a quick tip for getting perfect glue lines. Use your index finger as a guide. Now I can drop in the bottom of the table and attach it with inch and three quarter screws. This time, not forgetting to drill the pilot holes. Now that I have the table put together, the next step is to beef up this leg a little bit. I'm using a piece of 3 8 plywood. I'll stand it up against the inside of the leg, use a sharp pencil, and trace a line. And now I'll make that cut with the cross cut sled on the table saw. After cutting the parts to size, I'll measure and mark to pre-drill and countersink nine evenly spaced holes. After spreading wood glue on the filler piece, I'll tack it in position with three quarter inch nails, and then use nine three quarter inch screws. Now that I have the table assembled, the next step is to band the edge to hide the edge of the plywood, and I'll use the table saw to make the edge banding. I like to rip the edge banding about a sixteenth of an inch heavy. For the top and legs of the table, the edge banding needs to be about an inch and an eighth, so I'll rip it at an inch and three sixteenths. The bottom of the table and drawer dividers needs to be three quarters of an inch, so I'll rip these parts at thirteen sixteenths. Next, I'll resaw the edge banding at 3 8 and then run it through the drum sander, sanding all four sides until the edge banding measures 5 16 by the same thickness as the table edge. I used the edge banding to trim the back of the table last night, attaching the molding with one inch pin nails and the pin nailer, and then using the bandy clamps. I've let the glue set up overnight. It's now the first thing in the morning. I'll go ahead and flip this table over and trim the front. When I attach the edge banding to the table, 
I'll start on one side and then work my way around. And the first thing I like to do is put a miter cut on the one end that's facing the top. I'll use a piece of scrap wood to make sure the molding is in the correct position and then clamp it in place. Using a very sharp pencil, I'll make the mark for the next cut. With the first piece of molding cut, I'll attach it with one inch nails in the pin nailer. The nails do a good job of holding the molding in position and the clamps create a strong glue joint. Now that I've got this first piece of molding attached, that's what I'm working off of. I've cut a miter for the piece at the top here and I'll double check the fit. That's the one thing you want to make sure that your, your 45s are right on the money. And now I can go ahead and clamp this piece in place and mark the other end for the next cut. After attaching the edge banding to the top and legs of the table, next I'll attach the thinner edge banding to the bottom and the drawer dividers. Now that the main construction of the table is finished and the edge banding is attached, I'll move on to the drawers and I'll get started by rough cutting the drawer fronts and the drawer backs to size. The drawers on this project will feature continuous wood grain across the front and back of the table, so definitely take your time here and label the parts so you don't confuse them. I'll cross cut the drawer parts a little heavy and then use the table saw to rip them to width. Next, I'll square up one side before setting up a stop block and cutting the parts to their exact length. Okay, well now I've got my drawer fronts and my drawer backs cut to size. And this is a little complicated because I want continuous wood grain not only through the drawer fronts, but also through the drawer backs because the backs are also the back of the cabinet. So take your time, label your parts, and make sure that your grain is going in the right direction and you don't accidentally flip your boards. So now that I've got these parts cut to size, I'll go ahead and cut rabbits in the drawer fronts and the drawer backs as the first step of making the drawers. I set up a stop block on the crosscut sled to cut and test the fit of the rabbit joint on a piece of scrap wood and that's a good fit so now I can go ahead and cut the joint on both the drawer fronts and the drawer backs. Now that I have the rabbit joints cut in the drawer fronts and the drawer backs, I've set up a stop block on the miter saw and I'll cut the drawer sides to length.
next step is to cut the groove to accept the drawer bottoms. I've set the height of the blade at a quarter of an inch and adjusted the fence to three eighths of an inch. I'll make one pass on the test piece and one pass on all of the drawer parts. Because I'm using 3 8 plywood for the drawer bottoms, I'll move the fence over an eighth of an inch and make another pass on all the drawer parts. After making the second pass on all the drawer parts, I'll move the fence over again, this time a little less than an eighth of an inch, and I'll cut another pass on the test piece. I'll sneak up on this cut, taking a little off with each pass until I have a nice fit with the test piece. Once I've got a good fit, I'll run all the parts through one last time. With the grooves cut, the next step is to cut the drawer bottoms to size. I'll make the first rip on the table saw and then set up the crosscut sled and cut the drawer bottoms to length. I'll cross cut the drawer bottoms a little heavy and then set up a stop block and cut them all to size. Now that I have all of the parts cut to size, it's time to assemble the drawers. And I've already assembled two just to get warmed up before I build one on camera. And I can't stress enough how important it is to label your parts. Since we want continuous wood grain on the front of the table and the back of the table, it's really easy to confuse them and make a huge mistake. So take your time, label your parts, and you won't have a problem. I'm building the drawers with screws, and the next step is to pre-drill and counter some holes for the screws. First, I'll measure in a quarter of an inch on the drawer sides and draw a line. Then measuring down from the top, I'll make a mark at 7 eighths and 3 inches. And I'll do that on both sides. Over at the drill press, I'll drill a sixteenth of an inch pilot hole at those marks. Next, I'll use a quarter inch drill bit to countersink the holes. I use a brush to evenly apply wood glue to the rabbit joint and I'll add a small bead of glue in the groove. After assembling the drawer, I'll clamp the parts in position and use a sixteenth of an inch drill bit to drill a pilot hole into the side of the drawer fronts. Next I'll use inch and five eighths finish screws to build the drawers. With the drawers built, I'll move on to preparing the table for the veneer. 
The best wood fill to use when working with veneer is Auto Body Bondo. This is a two part product that dries pretty quickly, so be prepared to mix up a few batches. Notice that I'm filling the screw holes and the end grain of the plywood. Wood veneer is very thin and imperfections will telegraph through the surface. So it's very important to have a nice smooth surface before applying the veneer. One last detail on the drawers is to fill the screw holes with walnut plugs. I'll use the bandsaw to trim the plugs and the sander to sand them flush. I've taken a little time to sand and fit the drawers and everything looks good. And because I'm going to finish this project with water locks, which is a tongue oil finish, I've decided to finish the insides and sides of the drawers with a waterborne lacquer. And the reason why I'm going to do that is the tongue oil finish is going to look great on walnut. It's really going to pop the grain. But the lighter colored poplar of the drawer sides and the birch of the drawer bottom will turn kind of an orangey yellow, which really isn't that appealing. So I'll finish the insides and sides with the waterborne lacquer, and that'll give the inside of the drawer a really clean, fresh look. I'll spray the drawer with two coats of waterborne lacquer, sanding in between coats with 220 sandpaper. One more step before applying the veneer is to fill the pinholes in the edge banding. I like to sand the wood until the sawdust fills the pinhole, and then I'll drop a bead of CA glue on top of the sawdust and spray it with activator. With the drawers back in the table, I'll sand it one more time before applying the veneer. When you purchase veneer, more than likely it will be shipped to you in a box just like this sheet here. And this is a piece of figured Claro walnut with a 10 millimeter paper back from GL veneer. And at this moment, it's a good idea to really take your time and decide how to best use the wood grain for your project. I've decided that I really like these darker book matched sections in the center here. So my first cut will be right at the seam in the very center of the sheet and I'll be able to use this side for one of the sides and the top, this side for the other side of the table and the two inside pieces of the table. I'll also have two off cuts on either side of the sheet and I'll be able to use those for drawer fronts on a future project. After making the first cut in the center, I'll move the straight edge and cut the two pieces that I'm using for this project. I'll roll up the off cuts and put them aside for a future project. Okay, well now I've made my first cuts and we can call them rips since I was cutting with the grain and it might help make things make more sense. And just like anything, as your parts become a little bit smaller, things become a little bit more clear and a little less confusing. And basically when I was looking at the veneer, I was looking for any potential imperfections. And so this is the best piece of veneer for the project that I'm doing as far as the width and anything that's concerned. This piece over here has a small imperfection, so I'll end up using that on the inside of the table. So now that I've established that this is my best piece. I'm going to start over here. I'll measure up 30 and a half inches, making sure that my factory edge is square and that there are no breaks or imperfections in it. 
and I'll measure up the 30 and a half, which is going to give me a quarter inch reveal or, or overhang that I can trim off with the flush cut bit in the router. I'll make that mark at 30 and a half and then I'll cross cut the veneer using the framing square as a straight edge. So that's gonna be my left side of the cabinet. I'll be sure to label it with an arrow pointing towards the front of the cabinet. This is going to be the top of the cabinet. And then this over here is going to be an off cut. And then I'm going to come down on this side of this sheet that has no imperfections. And this will be the right side of the cabinet. Okay, now I've labeled the first piece, measured and marked 30 and a half inches. I've got my framing square in position and I'm going to use a squeeze clamp to keep the square from moving while I'm making the cut. Okay, so now I've got this piece here. That's going to be my left side. And now I'll measure a half of an inch larger than the table. So the table's 56 inches long. I'll cut this piece at 56 and a half. Now I have the left side cut, the piece for the top cut and labeled. The next step is to cut the piece for the right side of the table. And in order to get a perfect waterfall grain match, I'd have to make the cross cut right about here, but obviously that's not going to work because then this piece would be too short. So I'll have to compromise and come up all the way to about here. And it's not gonna be perfect, but it will be pretty close and I don't think anyone will notice. This is the piece of veneer that's left over. And since the inside of the table measures just a little bit less than 24, I'll make a mark at 24 and a quarter and cross cut two pieces for the inside. I'm using contact cement to apply the veneer and I like to use two coats. The first coat seems to absorb into the material, so to get a better bond, I'll let the first coat dry and then roll on a second coat. Once the second coat is dry to touch, I can apply the veneer. The contact cement will only stick to other surfaces with contact cement. I'll use strips of wood to help position the veneer. Once the veneer is in the correct position, I'll remove the strips of wood working from one end to the other. With the veneer in position, I'll trim the overhang with a flush cut bit in the router. With the insides of the table finished, I'll veneer the sides of the table next and then the top. Once the veneer is in position, it's important to apply pressure to create a strong bond. Here I'm using a block of wood with a roundover on the edge and I'm working in the direction of the grain. Another option is a J-roller. After carefully sanding the table one last time with 220 sandpaper, the next step is finish. For this project, I'm using water locks. I'll apply four coats to the base and drawer fronts and six coats to the top for a little added protection. I've allowed the finish to cure for a few days and now I can attach the drawer poles. I made a quick jig with a piece of eighth inch masonite to make sure I drill the holes in the correct position. I also used a drill press to drill a hole in this block of wood 
and this should help me drill holes that are perfectly straight. All right, well, I am just about finished with this project and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Right now, we are in the upstairs of the barn. This is the second floor. It's my art studio slash photography studio. And I'm gonna to try to get some decent shots of this table before I deliver it. I still need to install the drawer stops. And when I was building the table, I made sure to label the stops and the direction in which they're supposed to be installed. I also made this small screwdriver so I can open the drawer and install the stops. Okay, well that is about it. I hope I answered any questions that may come up during your project. I'm really happy with the way this table looks in the home. Uh, you can see the lily table that I built last year just beyond the table or beyond the sofa table. I will be building some more furniture for the same client in the future. Really great people. So nice to have them for clients. And one thing I would suggest is to make, the, to make the build a little bit simpler, I made the drawer, the drawer fronts flush with the front and the back. That's definitely a little bit more difficult than setting them in a little bit. You could set them in a little heavier than a 16th of an inch, maybe 3 30 seconds. Do that in the front and the back. And that way, if you don't get a perfect fit with those drawer stops, it's really not going to be that noticeable and it is kind of a nice design element. I did that very same thing with the Babinga desk that I made for my sunroom. The drawers are set in a little bit and it's just a nice design element and if, if one drawer is just a tiny bit further in than the other, your eye really isn't going to notice it. If you are going to build this project, don't forget there are professional plans in the description below or they're on my website and you can get there through the link in the description. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.